Hi, everybody. My name is Elena Lauder, and um, thank you for bearing with me. This has been an amazing morning of presentations, and I know we're probably all getting ready for lunch, so I might breeze over um, some things. Um, sorry, Mason, do I? It just left and right or up and down, I guess. Okay. Oh, wait. PhD candidate from the University of Arizona, and when I'm here in Chile, I'll be affiliated with the University of Diego Portales here in Santiago, and then for a stint up in the desert as well um, at the University of Tarapacá. So um, my plan for the outline, I'll t or for the talk, sorry, drank way too much coffee, uh, need some food, but um, I'll give a little bit of background about myself and how I became interested in Chile, and then I'll kind of walk through my research proposal, maybe skip over some parts we can get into later and give a little plan for what I'm going to do in my time here. So, um, I am originally from Idaho, and I went to University of Montana for my undergrad and studied resource conservation. And afterward, um, it was my dream to be a river guide on one of the most famous rivers in the world, which is the Fudalefu in, in Chilean Patagonia. So I started coming to Chile to kayak and raft guide, and um, and a a professor of mine from undergrad emailed me and said, I know you live in Patagonia, um, I've got some money to study private land conservation in Chile, um, would you like to do that? And I said, where do I sign? I'm in. So um, that actually took me back to the University of Montana, um, where I looked at social political dynamics around conservation down there and um, really deepened my relationship with Chile and became interested in environmental change here. and. Um, yeah. So that brings me to um, my more recent chapter, which is my dissertation, which is looking at solar energy development up in the Atacama Desert. So um, just to give a little bit of a set the stage for my work, we've got to urgently decarbonize um, to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. And to this end, Chile has really emerged as a leader. So since 2014, they've quadrupled their renewable energy production, and um, they've established the ambitious target of being um, getting all energy, or 70% of energy from renewables by the year 2050. So these advances have been sparked by some recent policy developments. One specifically called Energy 2050 is a new energy policy that's supposed to make energy more inclusive and more sustainable and more just. Um, furthermore, the little bit of um, political economic context, Chile, as I'm sure all of you know, is characterized by a very neoliberal model. So that means embracing the idea of limited government regulation, free markets, and um, private sector-led development. And then furthermore, the natural conditions of the, um, of the Atacama, the desert north, make it ideal for solar and wind development. It's really flat, it's really sunny, and so um, there's been huge growth of uh, renewables development there. So the megawatts and the numbers of millions invested in renewables are really topping the headlines, but there's not very much research so far on sort of how this dynamic is unfolding up in the Atacama Desert. So as this Chilean energy transition is happening and is really sort of a leader in this space, um, my research is trying to look at the dynamics on the ground. So my research specifically um, asks about um, to what extent do recent changes in energy policy and, and regulation, including Energy 2050, um, how do they enable participatory and democratic energy production in Chile? Um, and then in what ways are local communities embracing or contesting or otherwise interacting with um, large-scale solar projects up in the Atacama Desert? And then finally, in a more sort of abstract vein, how does the expansion of the electricity grid infrastructure um, enable new forms of extraction and alternatively open up spaces for sort of more socially just energy production. Um, so um, I'm not going to go too deep into this, but the, my approach is generally political ecology. So that is a framework for thinking about the environment and society um, by focusing on economy at different scales and also at power relations against, among social actors. And then also the materiality of the environment, the actual hard stuff of wires and electrons and stuff. 
And so within that, I draw from a few different streams of literature, and one is um, energy transitions, which basically, uh, its founding idea is that um, even though energy is frequently conceived of in the sort of technical matter, switching from one energy source to another, it actually implies all sorts of social and political changes around that system. And then secondly, um, infrastructure studies. So I see infrastructure not just as a physical thing, but also as an enactment of state power. So it can be a huge part of colonial projects and also development, but it carries within it dreams of the future. And um, yeah, in fact, I'll just share a quick anecdote that builds on um, Evan's work. Piñera, right before he left office, um, announced a really crazy plan to build an undersea cable from the Atacama Desert to China exporting renewable energy. So that sort of gives you an idea of um, the way that infrastructures can carry within them imaginings of you know the future and geopolitical order. So that is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's real. It was said. And then finally, my work is also about environmental governance. So thinking about what kind of actors beyond governments, but also NGOs and corporations um, who gets to make decisions about the environment and through what sort of laws and policies and regulations. So um, my methodology is multi-scalar and comparative. So when I say multi-scalar, that means I'm thinking about changes at the national scale in policy, but then also doing a more ethnographic look um, in communities up in the desert north and trying to put these two scales sort of in conversation with one another. And then I'm not sure exactly how I'll do this, but it all sort of connects up to global patterns of decarbonization and pushes by big energy corporations to green their, you know, sustainability profiles and stuff like that. So trying to think about how all these different scales interact together. Um, so I'm going to start off doing interviews in in um, in Santiago with national scale actors and corporate advisor types. And then I'll go spend quite a few months, like seven, up in the Atacama Desert. And I'm still sort of figuring out where my exact case study will be up there um, and doing some more ethnographic type of research up there. And then I'll return back to Santiago and hopefully be able to um, engage with policy circles and share some insights. And um, the Atacama Desert is really crazy. I had never been there until recently. I did a scoping trip this fall. And there are a lot of really complex changes going on. One is lithium development, which is really massive. Mm -hmm. Another is green hydrogen, which is the production of hydrogen gas, but using renewables. And then, of course, it's also the heart of the copper mining industry, which turns out to have everything to do with renewable energy development as well. So many of the large projects actually flow directly to um, copper mines. And that's a huge impetus for the, um, the skyrocketing renewables. So, um, those are some of the dynamics that are going on, and um, yeah, let's check back in in a year. <laughs> um, you mean the energy itself is being used by the mines? Yeah, to exactly. Mine the yep. That's what I was. And I think I'm just going to leave it at that for now. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.